Hey y'all, my name's Tyson, and this time around, let's talk about cutting components. Cutting components are sometimes known as window components. They're components that will cut through another surface. Windows happen to just be a common use case, but you can use them for a, a number of different things. They're a little bit, you know, you have to make them in a very exact way. So sometimes they're not as, as widely known. They also can be a little finicky. So let's talk about how to make them and cases where you might or might not use them. The basic idea of a cutting component is this. We're gonna draw on another surface and I don't have anything grouped in here for simplicity's sake. But if I push a simple opening into this wall and select that opening, make component, you see it says cut opening here. And if I copy and paste that, I can even paste it to other surfaces but it's cutting that opening through any of these. And in fact, if we add some more detail in here, say even delete that interior surface so we could see right through that, you can see what it's, what it's doing. So let's talk about how to make these. Now we can use um, you know, a little more complex example, let's say something like this. We can add some detail before we make it or after. But here's the key. If I double click on this wall surface, these edges are part of what shows up as the bounding edges. And these edges are shared between the surface and the component we're trying to create. So when we select this component, we just have to be sure we're selecting all the geometry, including and essentially these outside shared edges. Now, if we had a more complex model, you want to be extra careful because if I select like this, go to make component, cut opening is not an option. And you can guess why, of course, it's because I drew this geometry back here and accidentally selected it. So just make sure, make sure your selection is clean. I'm gonna right click, make component. Cut opening should be checked, glue to any should be there. And that is your clue that this will work. We can turn that off if we wanted, but we do want this to cut an opening. Glue to any you notice that the axis doesn't have the typical red, green, and blue axis where it's blue is facing out in a different uh, line. This only has the red and green directions because it is aligned to a surface. So when we create this, we can do things like array it. As we saw, we could copy and paste it. We could bring it in from the component browser it would work and we're not limited to the original one once we've created this idea of this shape cutting into a surface we can change that original shape we can continue to make some changes here we can even extend this out beyond the original surface as long as we're maintaining that there is a set of outlined shapes that will cut an opening. We just have to make sure we maintain that. If we were to lose that, obviously we'd lose that cutting ability. So I'm gonna undo that. If I triple click and just move this off to the side as though I was moving it somewhere, you can see the sort of ghost of what was left as it's cut through that surface. So that's the idea. Just make sure you have a good selection and make that into a component. Now, the thing about cutting components is they will only cut through one surface, like we've got here. 
I'm going to take this surface. I could delete it. I'm going to add just a material that has an opacity so we can see through it. And then copy and paste it over here. This wall has a thickness. And even though it will cut through this front surface, it will not cut through the back surface. If I were to edit any of these, extend that window back further, over here, it just pushes right through that wall, but it doesn't cut through it. Now, there are some cases out there, and, and some people have developed workflows where they'll create a cutting component on one side, a cutting component on the other. The thing you have to be aware of, though, is that I can't take this cutting component and embed it or nest it inside another component and have it still, um, for example, I couldn't take this one and this one, make those a component, this is gonna mess up that behavior. It didn't even <laughs> create the component. So just be aware that you can only ever cut through one surface and there's some extensions and like I say, some workflows to kind of get around that, but you just do be aware of that. Another thing to be aware of, when I say they're a little finicky, this is a case of how that can be. So if I copy and paste this example here, I could take perhaps both of these and array them and that'll work fine. But it can get a little trickier if you're trying to push that functionality too far. If I have two surfaces and then I'm copying multiple components, maybe one will work, but if I say two times, oh, it didn't like that I'm trying to array multiple cutting components across multiple surfaces. So just, again, be aware that you may need to be a little bit sensitive with how you use cutting components on, uh, in your particular use case. So that's why some people like them and some people don't. Another reason is that if you happen to accidentally lose your original surface, well, that's easy. We can draw that original surface back, but now that's a new surface. It doesn't register that these were cutting, supposed to be cutting through it. So I'm gonna undo, undo, but you have to be aware that that could happen as well. One last um, thing to know, we've just been talking about how cutting components only cut through one surface. So in theory, we couldn't use them on a curved edge, except in SketchUp, when we show hidden geometry, we know that curved edges are in fact made up of flat segments. So as long as we view hidden geometry, and I've got that on a keyboard shortcut, then I could come in while I'm viewing hidden geometry, create a cutting component, and as long as I maintain using it on flat surfaces, then this could work for us. And we just talked about copying multiple components. This I think should work for us that we should be able to array this. Let's say three times. And that, that did work for us. Those are worth trying. And again, they are components. So we could continue to edit them as long as we maintain that outer cutting um, edges. You know, that can be something very interesting depending on what you're trying to model. So massing model, there are use cases where these can be really helpful and there's cases where you either have to treat them with um, you know, very specific techniques or find a different method. So it all depends on, on your preferences and what you're trying to model. Okay, there you go. Hopefully that made sense. If you haven't tried cutting components, even if you don't think you'll use them, it's worth going in, giving them a try, understanding how 
SketchUp can under you know create that relationship between shared surfaces and sticky geometry. They are pretty interesting. I find them useful definitely in some use cases, but again, it sort of just varies. Your mileage will vary depending on your type of projects. There we go. Hopefully that was interesting. Let us know what you think. Let, let, I'd be curious. Do any of you use cutting components? How do you use them? What do you find them really useful for? Or where, in fact, might they break for you? Let us know. And let us know what else you would like to see us talk about in these videos. Please do like and do that subscribe thing and we'll see you next time.